Being able to design a mobile robot that can move in any direction can seem like a bit of a daunting task. That allows them to move around pretty freely better, but one point in time, you always have, it does have holonomic. These are really commonly seen compared to robotics with MRC. And by the end of today's video, you should know the six most common types of holonomic drivetrains that you can design your robot as. I'm Brogan Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. And today we're going to go through a bunch of different types of holonomic drives, tell you what the pros are, tell you what the cons are, and also ask you some questions so you can help decide for yourself what is the best drivetrain that makes sense for my robot, be it competitive robotics like FTC, FRC, or VEX, or your own DIY project. So first off, what exactly is a holonomic drive? Uh, holonomic drives are essentially a robot chassis that can move in any direction freely, forward, backwards, reverse, sideways, or diagonals. Their best ability with holonomic drive is their agility and their ability to move in any direction. Problem with these is that because those special wheels do give them agility, it's also a main drawback on their design itself that their traction tends to be pretty poor uh, and they are pretty vulnerable to being moved around or they can't make it up steep surfaces, things like that. So the most common types we'll go through today are mechanism drive, X drive, Kiwi drive, H drive, swerve drives. So, Holonomic drives are not the end-all be-all and the best robotic train that exists. Some questions you need to ask yourself is, you know, is the primary goal of your robot to be fast and agile, or is it to be pushing things around? Does your robot need to make really small, fine, precise adjustments, or can the parts that are on top of the robot do those fine adjustments of the entire chassis itself? And holonomic drives tend to work best on smooth, flat surfaces. So if you're not using one of those, holonomic drive might not be your right choice for you. So they're perfect when you need a robot that can move things around. They're also a great choice in many competitive robotics games that don't need a lot of direct pushing or heavy defense. So let's take a look at mechanism drives first. They're typically four powered wheels. So you need at least four motors to be able to do those. And there's anywhere from four to eight different 45 degree rollers, which is called mechanism drive. So we can take a look at some of these robots driving around. So we've got a robot that's capable of moving upwards, sideways, diagonally, in any of these cases. There's also another mechanism drive test here that allows them to move around pretty freely in any direction and any axis, which is one of the huge benefits of mechanism drive. So they can move in any direction they want, and they typically have pretty simple square frames. And then their lateral movement is also quite intuitive when it comes to actually driving it. You've seen these in forklifts around before and that they're actually pretty intuitive to driving things around. Some of their main drawbacks is that they don't have a lot of friction. And to be able to push them around, because there's the angle rollers that does allow them to move around, it does make it more challenging for them to be able to be pushed. They need flat surface to be able to work. And depending on the design, especially compared to just a traditional flat wheel, these wheels are expensive and they're a lot more fragile. Some things to ask yourself is, does your robot need to be precisely aligned as it's moving around? Are there any sort of side impacts that the robot might face that might damage some of these wheels? Is the floor going to be flat? And that's going to be a question for just about all of these. So these are great when you have a bit more budget to be able to work on. But if you don't quite have the budget to be able to get a mechanism drive, there are other drives that do exist. A popular one of this is Kiwi Drive. So Kiwi Drive has three omnidirectional wheels that you need less motors to drive this, so it's not as power hungry. So we can take a look at Kiwi Drive here, where depending on at one point in time, you always have two motors that are being powered. So you don't need four motors to drive around. Uh, sometimes you'll have three like it is with this robot currently spinning itself around. Now, one of the best options for a Kiwi Drive, like we see in this BattleBot Omnis, is that you only need three motors. So for really power-hungry systems, it's pretty good. It's also pretty light and compact uh, in that you can make Kiwi drives quite small because you only need three wheels. Uh, they're a little bit more complex to program than a mechanism drive, but not crazy. They do have lower pushing power because they only have three wheels, and they can be unstable sometimes because of the three-point base. So if one of those wheels come off, rather than having four or three more contact points, they can put on a traditional four-wheel chassis, you end up losing some of those uh, contact points. So another thing that's also kind of awkward about this is that because it defines a triangle style drive, it makes it a little bit awkward to move it around uh, and to build things on top of that as opposed to building on top of a square. So the best question you ask yourself is, do I need a really small robot that is not very power hungry? If that's the case, 
Kiwi Drive is probably good for you if you don't need a lot of pushing power. So these are best for really kind of specialized small scale robots or really low budget builds that still wants a holonomic drive. For competitive robotics, unless you're building a really small robot, uh, we typically don't see a lot of Kiwi drives around. Maybe in small scale programs like VEX IQ, you might see some Kiwi drives around, but it's not super common. Another side of sort of budget constraint on a mechanism drive is something called an X drive here. So it does have four powered wheels and they're set up in an X-based formation. So you can kind of think of this getting a little closer to mechanism drive. If you had the budget for it, mechanism drive is still better, but an X drive is not a not a poor example to come in here because it's sort of a step up from Kiwi as well. I'd say that provided you can have a square base, this is a pretty big improvement over Kiwi drive in most settings. It's going to be faster on 45 degree angles because of that. It offers a little bit better holonomic movement than a Kiwi drive does, but similarly, not very strong against pushing. It's probably even worse against pushing than a, than a mechanism drive is. Sometimes your frame shape, it's an improvement over Kiwi drive and your Kiwi drive with a triangle, but because it is this kind of, you have these angular wheels, you can still put a box frame on or on top, but it still does having some of those problems of that mounting. Some other questions here to ask is, again, you're kind of budget constrained. Do you have a little more budget than Kiwi Drive, but a little less budget than you would be able to buy a mechanism drive? If that's the case, this is a great robot to throw together if you don't have the budget to be able to put up mechanism drive, but still allow you to be able to get a holonomic drive setup. Another interesting setup here is called H Drive, where it's kind of like your four tank drive. But instead of using traction wheels, you're using omni wheels, and you have a fifth omni wheel in the center that allows you to strafe left and right. So let's take a look at this little H drive here, where it does have holonomic, and you have a single motor in the middle that allows you to move left and right. So you get a little bit of traction moving forward, probably a little bit better than on a mechanism drive, and you have a fifth wheel that allows you to strafe left and right, so that helps it up. So it's kind of a good compromise between that X drive to be able to get a little better strafer power, but not quite up to the mechanism. Again, you have a lot of these issues with being able to be pushed around. Uh, one big one here is that it's a little easier to get stuck because you have a wheel in the middle. Uh, it also makes it a little more complex to be able to design things around that. You've got a wheel in the literal middle of your robot, so it does make you think about how can I package things around. That being said, if you need the ability to nudge or strafe around like this kind of medical uh, robot that's driving around, it can be a pretty stable platform, especially if you're just going to be boxing things up on top. So if you need some sort of strong forward pushing power, while we'll also be able to make your precise sideways movements, an H drive is not a bad uh, design to be considering. The last two designs are actually kind of both in the same. It's called Swerve Drive. Uh, and Swerve Drive has two kind of major setups. One here is this four pod setup, like we have in this design, where you have four pods with two motors each. One motor drives the wheel in a circle, and the other motor turns the motor around. So let's take a look at some video examples here. We've got a motor turning and moving this around as it follows an April tag. We've also got another Swerve Drive here being able to drive around, so we can see that one motor is capable of spinning the wheels to rotate, and another motor actually rotates the wheel along so that it can actually drive along that base. Now, these are really commonly seen competitive robotics with FRC. It allows you to drive your robot around, makes them very agile, which is a great design when it comes to uh, swerve drive. So and it really does combine the best of all worlds in that you have some freedom of movement of holonomic drive, but you get the grip and the pushing power of a tank drive. So swerve drives are awesome setups for robotics. You have the ability to change direction anywhere you want. You've got great pushing power, just like in a tank drive, and you have all four wheels moving together. But they are also the most complex drive to be able to do because each of these four pods has two motors as well as a lot of different, depending on how you design it, gears, belts, chains, uh, anything along those lines. They tend to also be a lot more expensive. Out of most of the other drives where you're only using four motors, you have to have at minimum eight motors to be able to drive this because you need one motor to actually drive the wheel and one motor to rotate the wheel. These are also really advanced to program as well. So despite having 
the best of all worlds, it also is the most complex, the heaviest, and the most power hungry of all designs. One thing to think about is, do you have the skills to actually design one of these? And do you have the skills not only to build it and to program it? As well, a great question, is the absolute GOAT or the greatest of all time in agility and power when it comes to robotic drivetrains really justifiable for the task that you're trying to do? And that's a big question, uh, especially at competitive robotics. Do you actually need a swerve drive set up? And it's really going to give you that advantage that you need. And does your team have the ability to actually program up one of these? Do you also have the resources to set these things up? Because these things are quite expensive and require a lot of custom machining or a quite expensive uh, pre-built part. Another option to swerve is instead of doing a four-pod swerve drive, is you can do a two-pod swerve drive. It has the same kind of pod set up as a swerve drive does, but instead of having four pods in each corner, you have two pods in the middle of the robot, and the four corners of your robot are set up with Omni wheels. So for instance, you can take a look at this robot here, where they have four Omni wheels in each side, and we can see it actually driving around. It has a very similar kind of drive setup to Swerve because it is a swerve drive. And again, we can see this robot driving around. It's got quite a bit of maneuverability, uh, similar to another swerve, but using a little bit less motors. And that's kind of one of the big benefits here. It's a little bit less complex, and then you have four Omni wheels on each corner and two paws in the middle. So it still does set some agility and some movement, but it does get around some of those motor limits. So instead of needing eight motors in total, you only need four. Problem with this is that, again, it's a bit of a compromise. Uh, in that now you only have two driving motors as opposed to four driving motors, so it's easier to push yourself around. Uh, it doesn't get that main benefit that Swerve Drive does provide. And it may start to get in sort of parallel with Mechanism. You may get slightly better maneuverability on a two-pod Swerve Drive, but you can get less pushing power than you will off of a Mechanism. Some of this drive setup can be a little bit unintuitive, uh, depending on how it is you're setting up, as well as your pushing power, depending on where it is you're pushing, you might not get the same as an actual Swerve. Again, you got a two-pod swerve here with one of these drives being set up on sort of a caster. This tends to be a bit more of an interesting design to think about, as opposed to something that, if you're going to be talking about this with competitive robotics, something that really ends up being competitive. And for the most part, it ends up being a bit of a proof-of-concept robot, being pretty cool, but it's not necessarily something that's the most competitive. And if you have motor limits, it's cool to see if you can do this. Now, if you have a more or less power hungry design, you need something that's a little more compact than something in a full mechanism drive would design if you're doing more of a DIY side of things. This is a really fun setup that you might be able to consider work through. If you're looking for some additional resources on designing drive trains, uh, you can consider joining up in the community down below uh, where I can give you some one-on-one -on -one feedback on your projects as well as vote on future tutorials. There's other resources like Game Manual Zero and Produce SigBots has some excellent resources on designing some of these holonomic and tank drive designed points. So I hope you found that a helpful overview in the types of different drivetrains that exist, as well as uh, some important questions for you to consider for what drivetrain might make sense for your project. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, best of luck on your next robotics project.